Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Solo Reviews with Trenny. I am Trenny, minus C, we've been doing some solo reviews on Mondays, uh, I've been tasked with uh, bringing you some single malt scotches, poor, poor me, it's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it, um, anyway, I'm uh, excited about that because I love single malt scotch whiskey and it is the reason I started my whiskey journey um, with some of these single malts out there. <clears throat> and as you enthusiasts know, there are so many out there that it's just never ending and you're always going to find new releases or old bottlings or uh, independent bottlings and different things. So it's pretty cool. Um, this one today is exceptionally cool. This is, and I may be pronouncing it wrong, but Le Chag, 10 year old. This is a bottle at 46.3%. It has an age statement, 10 years old. <coughs> it is natural color and non chill filtration. Um, both, it essentially checks all the boxes because. This is also a really, really well-priced spirit. I can't remember exactly what I paid for it, but it was, I think, under $70, like in the $70 range. Uh, so, 10 years old, non-chill filtered, natural color, 46.3% alcohol, and it was priced right. That is, those are some gold star standards right now for a craft distilled single malt scotch. Now, when I say craft distilled, that's not necessarily true because Le Chag is actually the peated whiskey that they make at Tobermory Distillery. So Le Chag was the name of it back in the day, um, but they changed it to Tobermory. And Tobermory puts out tons of different, they put out single malts, but they use their, their stuff in um, a lot of different blends. One of those blends that was really popular for a while back uh, in the day was uh, Black Bottle. But as I'm sure some of you guys know out there, Black Bottle, in my humble opinion, has gone downhill because they're not using as much peat in it anymore. They used to use, uh, it was like a peated blend, which is really quite nice. So Le Chag is the release from Tobermory where they use uh, peated malts and malted barley. Um, so the mo most of the time, Tobermory is actually unpeated. So this stuff, however, I brought to you guys um, as my first solo whiskey review, a Lafroig Select is what it's called. <coughs> and to put it lightly, it's quite disappointing. So I wanted to bring you guys something that is not disappointing and is priced really, really well, probably sometimes even better than the Lafroig Select. Um, and you're going to get a lot more out of this glass than you do out of the, the select. Um, so, let's get right to it. On the nose. Oh, This one, when I first tried it, took me by surprise. Because you kind of see the price tag and think, oh, well, maybe it's not as good. For whatever reason, which is a stupid way to think. Because this one is delicious. The nose... It's a light iodine, peat, mild citruses. There's a sweetness, like an almost an orange zest kind of sweetness. You can really dig your nose into this one and get a lot of different things out of this. After, you know, about 20 minutes of, of nosing this, I started to get like shoe polish and uh, like a salty smoke. Um... And one of the big features after a while, again, you let these sit and open up for like 5-10 minutes and you get all sorts of different flavors. One of those flavors being mesquite barbecue chips. It's on there. It's sweet. It's salty. It's smoky. A little bit of that campfire smoke, but it's more like almost like an iodine kind of a peat. Oh, so good. Okay, we're going to get right to the taste. I'm trying to make these reviews not as long, um, just because it's it's different when there's just one of you. So anyway, let's get to the flavor. Mm. Unbelievably delicious. 
46.3%. It's thick, it's rich, it's creamy. Um, there is that kind of medicine cabinet kind of flavor in there, like almost like a, uh, what do you call it? Those, those throat lozenges that uh, numb your tongue for sore throats. In fact, you should probably drink a peated whiskey for a sore throat. It really, really helps. Mm. There's like dried raisins. I guess all raisins are dried, so maybe I should say dried grapes. Anyway, there's brown sugar, a little bit of molasses, a mid-palate as you're swallowing it, mid-palate smokiness. It is so just well-made tasting and so delicious that all you people out there that are looking for a peated scotch that isn't specifically from Isla, because this is from the Isle of Mull, and uh, these guys are doing it right right now. This is a, a distillery to really keep your eye on. Um, it makes me want to go out and try some just the regular Tobamori products, because if their products of unpeated whiskey are as good as this one is behaving these days, then I think that's going to be something interesting to look for. Okay, back into it. Mm. There's nothing muted. There's so many flavors, so many spices, so much honey drizzle, and little chalky vanilla notes. In the finish, it finishes a little bit dry and chalky, but it's also bright and sweet. Hints of smoke at the end, and it lingers. It lingers really beautifully. Um, it's not one. That, it's, it's one you want to take your time with. Like this is a well-made spirit. It's been in a barrel for ten years. Let give it the respect it probably deserves if it's been in there that long. Really, really excellent stuff. Um, I am going to pretty much leave it at that. Go out and get yourself a bottle of this. I'd like to hear your comments and let me know if you guys think that this is an underrated whiskey as well, an underrated scotch, because um, like I said, when we first tried this, we were blown away. You can watch the Trenny and Sea unboxing, and I think you can tell by our faces. We're like, whoa. I don't think we were expecting this to be at really peaty either. And it's, it says right on the bottle, wonderfully peated. And that's kind of a good way to put it. Because it's not just a big bomb of campfire smoke. It's not peat for the sake of being peat. It has an underlying whiskey, scotch, single malt, barley sugars that are close to perfection. And I think this could be one in, in the standing of best whiskeys of the year for me this year. Whew. It's a bold statement. I mean, it is only February. I'm recording this in February right now. I'm sure you'll see this in a couple months, but really, really good stuff. So cheers, you guys. Click like, click subscribe. In fact, go to our Instagram page and check that out. All right. Cheers. Danny and C, drinking whiskey, describing all the flavors for you and me. Irish scotch. Bourbon and rye. If they like a bottle, they'll tell you why. Subscribe on YouTube.